Hey everybody, it's Terry with Romero Pictures Indie Brigade Drone Cav. And today I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, usually it's me on camera talking about this or that and, and waving my hands around and, and demoing things. But today I thought we'd take a look at some of the applications that are useful when flying a drone. Now again, these are aimed at the professional drone operator and you're going to hear me say this all the time. Um, it's so important to be flying under a FAA Part 107 certificate. So if you don't have that, get with me. I'll help you get your Part 107. Um, you may have already flown a drone a bit, have a little experience, feel you're pretty comfortable. I guarantee there are things that you need to be aware of that you aren't aware of uh, that uh, having a Part 107 will enlighten you to. Plus, it's also the law. So you know, you've got that little issue to think about too. But anyway, these are some of the apps that I use as a professional um, and many other professionals do in, uh, in flying and in preparing your flight, getting your pre-flight set up, um, tracking your maintenance, uh, insurance, lots of things like that. The biggest thing to do when you're planning your flight is to um, be prepared. Get all your ducks in a row. That means checking the weather. That means checking the airspace. That means getting authorization to fly in the airspace if you need to. It means making sure your flight is insured if you don't have a, a, a continuous blanket policy. Things like that. And some of these apps really make it handy and make it easy to do. And as you can see, you don't need a ton of apps out there. I mean, there are a ton available. But um, this is what I have on my phone. I also have a tablet and iPad that I have some others that I use for specific purposes, but for the bulk of what I do, what you see is what I use. Now, that top row we're not going to get into today. Those are my flight control apps. Uh, the Autel Explorer is for my Autel Evo. The DJI Fly app is for the Mavic Mini. The DJI Mimo is for what I call my ground drone. It's an Osmo Pocket uh, handheld 4K camera. We're going to do a video on that, that thing um, that I think you'll really enjoy. And lastly, uh, Tello. Tello is a really tiny drone that I use and I, I um, let people use for practice. It's, it's a very inexpensive drone, but it kind of gets you in to a good starting position as far as learning habits, learning good habits and how to fly with. So the Tello is going to be another future episode too. So that's a little preview of some things coming up. But let's jump down to that second row and take a look at a few things. Kitty Hawk is a service, if you think of it that way. It provides a lot of different things and different elements involved in flying. So let's open up Kitty Hawk. Okay, we signed in there. You do have to have an account. Now, Kitty Hawk does have a free basic account, which will serve many uh, of your needs. Um, if you do fly lots of missions or whatever, you will probably want to um, escalate that up to a paid level service. And even for for situations, and this is probably not applicable to what we do necessarily, but there are business situations where you have multiple pilots and teams and you need to set up uh, information for that. But you'll notice the first thing that comes up at the top half is a map that shows your location. Well, that's that's cool. Now notice where, where the green dot is, it's pinging out. It's pretty clear around there. I'm gonna zoom out some here so you can see a bit more. Now you'll see those grid lines, that gray grid, the green, red, yellow, and that red circle just above the green dot. Let's talk about those for just a minute. What those grids are, again, the green with the yellow and red in the middle, the gray, that means that's controlled airspace. That's around an airport. Those are airports near me. I live in central Florida in uh, west of Orlando, and that red dot just above is, you can probably see it, Walt Disney World. That red dot is telling us that that airspace is what's called a TFR. Stands for temporary flight restriction, but in the case of Disney, it gets renewed constantly, so it's probably gonna be there forever. There is no flying in a TFR. There's no authorization unless it's very specially handled. Um, uh, for example, Disney staff and their pilots could probably go through the hoops to get authorization to fly in that area. And of course, they, they do have drone operations there, so that's how that's handled. You or me, it would be really tough, if even possible, to get uh, flight permission in that area. The gray grid, this is a, a bit smaller airport. 
This is the Kissimmee Airport. It is a Class D airport. Still need permission to fly there, but, um, but it is possible. Now, going over a little bit further to the east here, this is Orlando International. It's call sign MCO you see in the middle there. The green tells us that we could get permission. We can get electronic permission to fly in that area up to a higher altitude, maximum 400 feet AGL or above ground level. As that gets closer to the runway, obviously, our permission uh, requirements get a little tighter and our altitude uh, allowance reduces uh, down to... Uh, obviously, we couldn't fly right on the runway in dead center, so that would be off uh, off limits there. So that's kind of a, a quick look at the maps there. I'm going to zoom out even more on Florida, and you can see uh, a, a variety of uh, controlled airspace. That big red area, you can probably guess what that is. Uh, that's the uh, Space Center, so we have lots of rocket launches there. They really... You know, get kind of funny about you flying a drone when they're launching rockets, obviously. So, let's look down at the bottom here a little bit. Some weather conditions. Now, if you've been flying drones at all, um, do you think much about the weather? I mean, that's just a good question to ask yourself. If it's sunny out, hey, I'll go out and fly. Not necessarily. There's a lot of stuff you have to be aware of. Well, Currently, right now, it's 80 degrees. It's a very nice day. The wind is really low. We've got four miles uh, an hour of wind. That's at surface level. That's here at the ground level. I'm going to show you another app here in a second that gives us information on how that wind speed changes with height, with altitude. Very important. It might be four miles an hour on ground level. You go up 50 feet, it could be 25 miles an hour. So that's stuff that you really need to know to not lose control of your drone. See, we're gusting to six miles an hour on the ground, so that's that's not much. Still, it's a 50% gust increase. Visibility, kind of obvious there. We need to have as much visibility as possible. Humidity, not too bad for Florida. 50% today, usually a lot, lot uh, more humid than that. Um, this is something you'll learn as part of your Part 107 training. Humidity does have an effect on air density. Air density has an effect on how stable a drone or any aircraft flies. Important to know. You need to check this stuff. Cloud cover, very low right now. And uh, it's at 7% at 4,545 feet AGL. Again, above ground level. And our sunset time is uh, also indicated there because you can't fly at night without a waiver. So that's another thing to be aware of. GPS, you probably already know that your drone uses GPS or the professional level drones use GPS for connectivity and for location services. So we want to have a strong signal. We want to be sure we've got a good strong GPS lock before we take off. Now just a little bit further below, um, we can do some uh, maintenance before we take off. We can configure our flight. Um, we can check the airspace <clears throat> of other drones in the area forecast, some other stuff there, um, sort of self-explanatory as we go along. Now, this air traffic, I want to talk about that for just a second. Drones are getting more intelligent as far as how they communicate outward and inbound. Um, manned air have what's called ADSB, which is a communications protocol to, to identify their, their location. Um, if they beacon out, that's called ADSB out. And if they receive location information, that's ADSB in. You might have heard that there's um, a lot of attention for drones announcing their positions uh, as that's a uh, proposed rule coming up about remote identification. So basically, just to boil it down, so someone knows some some uh, authority knows what is happening with your drone when it takes off just basically the location who the pilot is who the owner is what it's doing um, and when you think about there's millions of drones in the air a lot more drones than manned aircraft you can kind of start to see the importance there now some drone manufacturers are already kind of putting a toe in the water here and and doing that um, so I'm going to tap that air traffic map and see what comes up. Okay, this is right now. This is real time right this very second. 
These are DJI drones, and DJI does have this reporting built in, and they have some other um, bits built into their top technology that, uh, for example, won't let you take off without an unlock code in certain controlled airspace. So these are, again, things to be aware of. So you can see um, in our area, down at the bottom, there's a Mavic 2 Pro in the air. He's at 55 feet. Looks like he's coming down here just at 60. Now he's dropped down, uh, have an Inspire 2, a little bit bigger drone. He's at 184 feet. Um, so you can see these kind of moving around as these uh, drones change position and change heading and all. And you can zoom in on the map to get a better bearing of where they're at. Looks like there's a lot more activity being reported up here in South Carolina for some reason. Now, I'm going to go along the very bottom. You'll see these tabs, pre-flight activity, the big plus sign for add. Tap add, and this is where it lets you build your mission. So say you're going to fly a mission tomorrow. You can go in and, and put in the parameters as far as your flight times, uh, what drone you're going to fly, any details. So that's going to give you a record. Um, you can do a checklist, a pre-flight checklist, to make sure all your gear is wor in working order, your batteries are charged, the props are fresh, um, you don't have any mechanical issues that could set you back, and the, the risk assessment. Are you going to be flying um, in a, a, a busy area? Do you need to do anything special to secure the area or whatever? So you can do all that. But look at the very top. Request Lance Authorization. Lance is a automatic authorization system for certain controlled airspace. And if you are a Part 107 operator, you are assigned uh, your operator number from the FAA. You need that as part of your Lance application. But say we're going to fly in an area here in the green area of the grid, then I could you identify the exact location I want to fly in, go in and do my Lance request here within a minute or so. They text me back an authorization number, say I need two hours at uh, location XYZ. Here's all my credentials. Boom, it's going to send me back an authorization code and I'm good to fly. So, uh, so in this one app with Kitty Hawk, we can do all this stuff. And it's really, really cool. It uh, manages your weather information, it manages your flight your uh, checklists, and also get you your authorizations that you need to fly. So one service, one app does a really nice job. Again, there's some others out there similar to it, but um, I've just had really good luck um, with, uh, with Kitty Hawk, and I really like it. Now, we're going to jump to the next one over on that second row, Air Map. Uh, the, the name Air Map is pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's a map. So we're going to let it refresh here. Now, it's looking right at my location here. And uh, I'll wave. Ha, ha, ha. You can see me. No. Um, so AirMap is sort of basic in what it does. You can also get Lance authorization through AirMap, quick and easy. But AirMap doesn't give you all the things like the checklists and, and the weather information and all that. Its job is to do pretty much one thing, and that's to provide a good map and tell you what's going on with the airspace around you. Now, much like we saw before, I'm going to zoom out some and let it refresh here. Now I'm going to move over here to the airports that you saw before. Now the one here in the middle, the smaller blue circle, is uh, Kissimmee Airport. But notice that little triangle down at the bottom turned to red because I'm focused, my screen is focused, and I'm moving around over areas that are controlled airspace, or in this case of Disney, they're under a TFR. And of course, when we go around a bigger airport like Orlando International, really, really big airport, one of the busiest airports in the country, you can see how we have that much more um, lockdown. So I'm going to go right to the middle of, of Orlando International here. I'm going to tap that um, red triangle, that exclamation, got 23 warnings and 130 advisories. So I hope this gives you a little snapshot that, hey, it's just okay, just go out there and fly. There's a lot going on in the air, a lot of things you need to know about. And if you don't know about it, hopefully there wouldn't be an accident, but 
there's the potential for that. And so keeping the skies safe is the most important thing. And today, again, we're talking more as pilots and not necessarily camera operators because you are piloting an aircraft in the uh, national airspace. So the more you know, the better equipped you're going to be to handle anything. So you can see a lot of these uh, identify that there is automated authorization. And tapping that takes us over to the FAA site for more information on that. So I'm going to bring that down. And real quickly, let's just say we are going to fly a mission right here down in this quadrant. Looks kind of residential. Um, that 400 means that would be our ceiling. We could potentially get authorization to fly up to 400 feet in that quadrant. Now, next to the red triangle, you'll see a little blue and white. Looks like a couple wings with a circle. So I tap that. And it zooms in a bit on that area. So I can use the slider to identify my radius. So if I want to say I'm going to possibly need a 750 foot radius, um, then um, you can adjust that there. Now up at the top, it says create flight plan. That's what we're doing. Tap next. Now it's going to ask, some things here. What's the altitude? What's the maximum do I think I'll be flying? 100 feet should be good. We're just going to do some low altitude uh, tracking shots here, so that'll be fine. Um, we're going to start right now. That's how quick we can get the authorization. And say we need uh, two hours. Okay, I'm going to jump that up. The pilot will be me. I'm going to be flying my hotel Evo. I already have insurance, but if I need insurance, can get it right here quick and easy. And then we can go down and make any other uh, adjustments we need here. Um, maximum speed, expected visibility. We saw that was 10 miles earlier. But legally, you have to keep your drone in your visual line of sight. So three miles, unless you've got like Superman eye vision, forget it. It's going to be uh, within your line of sight. That is the next question down. If you say no, you better have a good reason and a good explanation. So anyway, you just go down, answer all the questions, tap next, and then it's going to give all the uh, uh, breakdown of what's going on. It's going to tell us a bit more about the wind, the visibility, the temperature, uh, things to expect. And then if I wanted to submit this, I'll just tap submit flight down at the bottom where there's a button up there at the top right and submit that. And within a few minutes, uh, at most, I would get a, uh, a text back with my authorization code to fly. So pretty cool. Now, the next two over are pretty similar. They're, these are kind of the Coke and Pepsi. Um, Skywatch and Verifly. Um, your flight should always be insured. Um, you need your liability coverage. You need uh, possibly coverage for your drone itself. That's called hull coverage. So you do want to make sure that you do have protection there because anything can happen. You have insurance on your car. You have insurance on your house. You have insurance on things uh, to protect you from unforeseen issues. Don't need to get into the purpose for having insurance, but just imagine having an uh, aircraft in the sky that you're controlling uh, that's worth a lot of money and flying over assets, you don't want to be out there flying without any safety net. Insurance is pretty cheap. And um, like, for example, right over our area, I just zoomed in a bit. And at the bottom left, you can see it's 15 bucks an hour. Now you can go in and I believe they have different, um, different parameters here. So you can do uh, monthly. You, at the top, you can select your limits, 2 million, 5 million. So you can really you know, get some good coverage here. Again, this is immediate. You pay with your credit card right there. Verify right next to it works pretty much the same way. And uh, so if you don't uh, plan on flying a lot, but you, you're gonna fly once or twice a year and you want to have that coverage, these are a couple really good options for that. Now let's jump down to that bottom row and pick the middle one, UAV Forecast. This is a free app. Again, they have upgrades. You know, like all apps, they've all got the upgrade versions. Um, but I use the free version. This is the free one, and it works really good. 
the first thing that comes up is a dashboard. And the most important thing is that big green bar at the top that says good to fly, or it will say not good to fly. And it bases that decision on a lot of information. Again, temperature, wind speed, uh, precipitation, visibility, uh, lots of things like that. So it, it takes all that into um, consideration and comes up with a, an assessment for you. So let's talk about a couple things here real quickly. Um, again, all the things are obvious. And we already talked about the need for satellites being locked. But are you familiar with what KP is? Um, your KP index is basically related to solar activity, believe it or not. Solar flares. Solar flares can mess with your drone operations. Bet you never thought of that. Solar flares give off quite a strong EMP or, or an electromagnetic pulse. Well, that can interfere with the communications between satellites, which aren't talking to your drone, which are, your drone is talking to your controller. So you have all these electronic things wirelessly talking to each other and certain strength of KP um, activity will interfere with that. You can lose your connection. You can lose your visual uh, feed from your drone, which isn't the worst thing as long as you still have control of it. But you can ultimately, in a worst case scenario, lose your control link between your drone. Then what have you got? Is your drone going to hover or is it just going to take off? What's going to happen? So these are the emergency situations that you have to be prepared for as a Part 107 drone operator. Um, so KP is, is something not to be ignored. Um, again, there at the bottom we can see on the left we have 15 visible satellites and we're locked on 14.7. That's an average because they're, they're kind of a uh, oscillating connection. And down at the, the bottom here there's a row of buttons. Tap the forecast. This is a really handy one. Um, you can see at the top it gives us some information across. Now notice at 7 p.m. this evening it's uh, giving me some red data there. Um, the satellites locked are going to drop down to 11. So that's going to be a little low. Now, most manufacturers want you to have 10 satellites locked or more to fly before they consider safe to fly. Um, and that's, that's generally okay. But again, the more the better. Um, UAV forecasts want you to have 12 or more to have a satisfactory lock. So that I would kind of feel better the more satellites we have locked to go with that. Um, all the other stuff looks good though. It looks green, um, and but you can see it drops down to nine, then it hovers in the 11s, and then stuff straightens up. Um, you know, the precipitation isn't an issue. Cloud cover, it's going to get a little dense, um, but the visibility stays good. So again, our our maximum ceiling is going to be 400 feet AGL. So we're not going to really, uh, uh, you know, be up in the thousands of feet of altitude. But we have some things like wind profile that uh, are helpful. Now remember when I said that the wind speed could be four miles an hour at uh, the surface level, at ground level, but it increases as we go up. Today it's not that bad. So um, say we went to 250 feet today, which is, you know, real, it's not super high, but it's, it's up there. Um, it's only six miles per hour. So that's not bad. Um, it's going to gust up to 11 miles per hour. Again, not too bad. To give you uh, an idea, a drone like an Autel Evo or a Mavic Pro or Mavic 2 Pro, they can handle up, up to about 25 miles an hour before they get uh, a little finicky. Well, a lot finicky, let's say. But the lower wind speed, the better. So we want to keep that down. But again, look here. Going up to uh, 5,000 feet, we go up to 13 miles per hour with gusts up to 20. That's getting a little gusty. But uh, your, um, your location and, and uh, terrain have a lot to do with that. Uh, here in Florida, it can be crazy. The other day, it was, it was crazy windy. I, I mean, I wouldn't even have uh, put a drone up 10 feet in the air. Um, so it, you have to just kind of keep an eye on that, but have some kind of documentation like this. It's gonna give you a little bit more of an insight uh, before you go out there and put the drone in the air as to what's going on. Lastly, I wanna talk about before you fly. This uh, has gotten a bit better. This is the app available from the FAA website, and it's faa.dronezone.com, uh, I believe. Um, you can contact me. I can give you the link for it. Before You Fly is a 
say a basic version of um, uh, these elements we've talked about today. Kind of think of it as a mini Kitty Hawk, but it does give you some um, information to go on to get started with. And it will give you map information. It will tell you things like uh, what different types of airspace, uh, uh, I, how it's identified on the map, like the TFR, the temporary flight restriction, what it looks like, what the controlled airspace looks like, um, what these different things are, stadiums, airports, national parks, military training routes. You've got all these things to keep in mind and be aware of, and this is a good place to go for it. Again, this is a free app from uh, the FAA. And for fun, let's look at this one. Flight Radar 24. This doesn't pertain necessarily directly to drones, but it tells you about air traffic in your area. And that can be helicopters, manned aircraft, commercial aircraft, um, things that are, are beaconing out. Now, out there in the top right around Bay Lake, you see a little plane moving. Down toward the bottom right, you see a helicopter. So you think the skies, you know, you look up in the sky, you don't see all these planes flying around. So you kind of think, eh, it's, it's not that busy. You know, I'm not going to run into anything. Let's zoom out some. What do we see? We see more air traffic. And I live in kind of a quiet area, believe it or not. Zoom out a little bit more. Wow, look over there around Orlando. Look how much air traffic there is right this very second. And a little more. And a little more. And a little more. Kind of starting to get the picture here. There's a lot of air traffic. Okay, that's Florida right now. Southeast. Now remember, this isn't all the aircraft in the air. These are just the ones reporting to, uh, to this app. A lot of stuff moving around in the sky. So again, it's important when we've got so many drones in the air, air too, to be aware of all this other air traffic, especially manned air, aircraft and air traffic, because we need to share the skies, we need to be safe. But um, these apps and these practices are there to do that for you. Again, please feel welcome to get in touch with me um, if you're needing help getting your 107 or if you're hiring a, a drone operator for your production. Um, I can give you the pointers on what to look for, questions to ask them. Are they 107? Are they insured? What's their experience level? What apps do they use? How do they plan their pre-flights? There's a lot of little things to know. So I'm here to help any way I can. Um, my uh, email is terry at blackdogdroneops.com. I'm also a mentor here on the Indy Brigade. Uh, so if you'd like to spend more time and throw your questions at me, um, we'll figure out all the answers to anything you need. So look for me in the mentor section on the uh, Indy Brigade. And uh, again, I really appreciate you taking time to uh, for the show. And I look forward to uh, seeing you next week on the next show. Have a great week.